Hello and welcome. My name is John English. I'm a consultant, a writer and an educator in the fields of strategy, competitive advantage and innovation. And it is my absolute pleasure to address you today on that much hyped, much discussed but very important theme, innovation. Today I'll speak about emergent trends, categories of business opportunity arising from those trends and how organisations should organise to exploit opportunities. Over the last few years, innovation has become an almost obsessive focus of government, social institutions, capital markets and of course business. Interestingly, innovation has always been the bedrock of science. Living as we do in a period that might be characterised as a digital and data revolution, some context, some perspective is required. The ubiquity of mobile internet connectivity, the explosion of data, the development of ever more sophisticated programming capabilities and the emergence of entirely new technologies like blockchain are threatening to rewrite the rules of business. Are doing so, in fact. That much is surely true. But as the French say, plus ça change, plus c'est la même chose. The more things change, the more they stay the same. The laws of economic gravity, like the laws of particle physics, do not change. There has to be a revenue model, and that revenue model must generate sustainable profit. Certainly economic value will be generated and captured in novel and different and surprising ways, but the lens of applied economics will be the final arbiter of value creation, as always. Everyone, it seems, has a view on important emerging trends. So, as just another self-proclaimed would-be Nostradamus, let me add my voice to the cacophony. There can be little doubt that the theme of universal connectivity is important. Connected homes, connected devices, connected assets, connected transport, connected cities, connected infrastructure, and of course connected people are already emergent realities. Connectivity will only accelerate. Secondly, and perhaps even more significantly, is the rise of the machines. Intelligent automation is increasingly taking the place of human beings in the conduct of repetitive routine tasks. But artificial intelligence and machine learning are already threatening to surpass human cognition. The recent experience of AlphaGo is a case in point. A machine that learned by itself and conjured elegant solutions to complex problems that had eluded human minds over millennia. Whether or not artificial intelligence poses an existential threat to the species, as Stephen Hawking and Elon Musk fear, is perhaps a question for another day. We are also likely to see the advent of what we might call combined realities. That is, hybridised realities spanning the virtual and the augmented, which are likely to find expression in areas like workplace safety, industrial training, education, recreation and gaming, and other applications that we cannot even now imagine. Customer experience has been a traditional competitive battleground, but it is now one that modern technology is transforming as we speak. Highly customised, data-informed offers and bespoke service delivery will become default standards. Risk vulnerability is another key trend. Technology and data dependence, while delivering great improvements in living standards, create complex vulnerabilities. Cyber security in a world of autonomous transport, for instance, will be hugely important, perhaps even a matter of life and death. And finally, technology development itself is rampant and will not slow down. Quantum computing, we are told, is just around the corner. The integration of technology and biology is simultaneously exciting and frightening. Blockchain remains an unfulfilled potential. Advanced simulation will blur reality and fantasy. Robots will become our collaborators at best, our adversaries at worst. The mapping of the human genome offers tantalising prospects in health and well-being, but also raises the spectre of human genetic engineering. The possibilities, of course, are limitless. What we can be sure about is that we will all be surprised. Despite all the tumult and unpredictability, business opportunity abounds. For the sake of some structure in making sense of these opportunities, it is useful to consider four key categories 
that have been spawned by the data and technology revolution. I have characterised these as follows. One, value chain reformation. Two, customer ownership and its corollary product and service commoditization. Three, new business models and processes. And four, entirely new businesses. Let's consider each in turn. The set of activities undertaken by firms in particular industries, sometimes referred to as the value chain, have their antecedents in market failure in the areas of contracting and partner integration. Firms can avoid the costs of these market failures by being vertically integrated along a value chain, and they do. This largely explains existing industry structures. However, digital connectivity, systems integration, and coordinated data flow can eliminate these costs and cause the disintegration and reformation of traditional value chains. If firms are not conscious of where margin resides across their value chain and fail to take action to protect it, they risk being outcompeted by specialist providers. In the world of customised, data-driven customer service, ownership of the primary customer relationship becomes of paramount importance. The emergence of intelligent, permission-enabled shopping bots providing real-time product and price comparison services will see many firms reduced to commodity providers, occupying the low margin end of the value chain. The millennials and digital natives place far less value on brand and far more importance on accessibility, immediacy, responsiveness and, yes, price. The era of the market segment of one is upon us. New business models, that is new ways of undertaking existing functions more efficiently and more effectively, have been enabled by data and digital technologies. This is the third category of opportunity. In financial services, for instance, risk assessments, whether credit risk or insurance risk, can now be made more accurately and more efficiently using public source data and digital connectivity in real time. In the retail industry, transaction and distribution functions can now be performed in an entirely new way. Amazon has proven that. There are countless other examples. And finally, Entirely new businesses and services have been, and will be, created out of the confluence of data and digital technology. We need look no further than Facebook, a service none of us realised we needed, yet ironically one we weren't prepared to pay for. The new business became reliant on that most venerable and possibly most venal of old world revenue models, advertising. Plus a change. In Australia, firms like Atlassian emerged out of the need to service the burgeoning software development industry, and Quantium arose out of the need to harvest and make sense of big data. These were entirely new businesses. Similar opportunities will inevitably present themselves in the future. Seizing such opportunities will become the prerequisites for organisational sustainability. In fact, I think the price of survival will be eternal vigilance and judicious experimentation. In that regard, I'm a fan of the Three Horizons model originally articulated by McKinsey's. Firms need to spend a lot of time defending and extending existing competitive advantage, no question about that. But securing current advantage is increasingly a necessary but not sufficient condition of corporate success. Firms must also invest in developing their products and services and upgrading their business models with a view to creating new sources of advantage in the near future. And finally, firms need to prepare for an unpredictable, more distant future, with say a five year time horizon, by developing a number of business portfolio options. This requires an exhaustive knowledge of emerging trends, a precise knowledge of the economics of their own business, an understanding of its vulnerabilities, and an appetite for experimentation and selective investment. A number of incumbent firms in Australia have set up corporate venture capital operations. This is one way of tackling the third horizon challenge. If organisations are not devoting at least 10% of their energy and resources to third horizon activity, they risk extinguishment. Corporate life expectancy is collapsing. Organisations must earn the right to survive and prosper. Above all, they must be prepared to lift their gaze and think differently to innovate. So, some key takeouts. Some things don't change, some things do change, and some things change a lot. 
Emergent trends in the data and digital revolution have created rich opportunity for business, but firms must respond to the innovation imperative if they are to survive and prosper in this new world. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching.